everybody welcome back to code red nurse mentor youtube channel if this is your first time here thank you so much for joining us today i'm nurse practitioner aquila and code red nurse mentor youtube channel is a channel that is all things nursing i have an exciting series that i'm going to present to you today and it's really one of the questions that i get the most as it relates to content in nursing school and that's medication math calculations. So I decided to put together a three part series that'll help make medication calculations a lot easier for you. So for this medication calculation series, I decided to put together a PowerPoint that will document the most important information that you need to know, memorize, and understand to help you get through the medication calculation test on the first try. Again, welcome to Code Red Nurse Mentor YouTube channel medication calculation series. This is a three part series where we will be discussing conversions, oral medication calculations and infusion rates. Today, we will start the series off with conversions, which are very important as a basis for what you need to know in order to conduct any medication calculation. The objectives for this PowerPoint and video today will be to explain the importance of accurate medication calculations, identify the rights of medication administration, identify and define the systems of measurement used most frequently in healthcare, identify abbreviations of frequently used measurements for oral medications, and identify conversions of frequently used me measurements for oral medications. Well, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Okay, first up, the importance of accurate medication calculations. So annually, medication errors re reports impact 7 million patients, and the cost is upwards of $21 billion across all healthcare settings. So that means inpatient, outpatient, long-term care, uh, hospice care, what have you, medication errors happen. But they are more frequently or more common in the hospital settings, which is where nurses and nursing staff are actually administering medications to our patients. I also wanted you to be aware of the medications that look alike and sound alike, um, because that accounts for a lot of the reason why we have errors in medication administration in addition to human error. So one example here is Paxil, which we use for anxiety and Plavix for blood thinners. So obviously you could see what kind of damage you would be causing if you mix those medications up um, for your patients. You are going to take a medication calculation test in your university or college, and a lot of times they ask you to have 100% on that test. Um, this is why, because we want to reduce medication errors and we want to start teaching this concept while we're in school. Okay. The way that we help reduce medication errors is by adhering to the rights of medication administration. So, right patient. Again, check that order. Do your patient identifiers for name and date of birth to make sure you are giving uh, the medication to the right patient. Right medication. You're going to look at that order again and make sure that it is the correct medication that the doctor ordered and whatever the physician sent up to your nursing unit that it correlates um, between both, right dose. The doctor is going to prescribe the medication or the nurse practitioner. And then he's gonna send that prescription into the pharmacy so that it could be dispensed. And then if you're in a hospital, the pharmacist is gonna send that medication up to you as a nurse so that you can administer that medication to the patient. Between those two to three entities, there is room for error especially human error. So even though it went through those checks, the medication order from the physician or the nurse practitioner to the pharmacist and back to you, when you get that medication, you need to be able to accurately calculate that this is an appropriate dose for my patient to take. Right route. How are we giving this medication? Is it orally? Um, are we giving an injectable medication? Is it supposed to be IV? Is it a suppository? How are we giving this medication? You need to double check that information as well because you can have patients that are NPO, which means they can't take anything by mouth. So if a medication comes up, say it's a liquid that they have to drink, that's not gonna be appropriate 
um, for that patient. So you need to identify and make sure that you're giving it in the right route, right time. What's the frequency of this medication? What's the common frequency of this medication? When was the last time this patient took their pain medication, for instance? Because you don't want to overdose someone by giving the medication too frequently. So you want to make sure that you're giving the medication at the right time. Write documentation. Remember to document the medication that you're giving after you have given it, especially for those injectable medications, because you want to make sure that you're documenting accurately the site. Left deltoid, right del deltoid. If it was an IM injection or if it was a sub-Q injection, you want to make sure that you're accurate about that information. Right reason. Why is my patient taking this medication? Let me check their medical history. Is this appropriate for their medical history? You want to make sure that you're giving the medication for the right reason. And their right response. You're going to give that medication and then afterwards you're going to evaluate to make sure that um, if it was pain medication that the patient's pain was relieved or if it was an anti-anxiety medication that their anxiety level has improved or if it was her blood pressure or heart rate that you took vital signs prior to giving it and then you'll take them after just to make sure that you are getting the desired effect. Okay, so I just wanted to give you guys a real quick snapshot of a nursing mnemonic. We use mnemonics in nursing to help us remember information more e easily. Um, this one is specifically for the six rights of medication administration. So it's excluding the right reason and right response. Um, but a good way to remember that is just by taking the first letter of each right and turning that into a little phrase. And the way that they did that here is patients do drugs round the day, which is right patient, right dose, right drug, right route, right time, and right documentation. So I wanted to show you an example of a medication label that you may see in real practice or even on a medication calculation test. I wanted to point out three different areas in this medication. Um, the blue arrow is identifying a volume in milliliters, so five milliliters. The red arrow is identifying a amount or a weight, which is 125 milligrams. And then the green arrow is identifying, again, milliliters, but in this one, it's identifying the total milliliters that is in the container. Um, that you have. So 75 milliliters total. What the blue and the red arrow are doing are, are identifying how many milligrams are in a certain set of milliliters. So this medication is set up after reconstituting that if you draw five milliliters of fluid, you have 125 milligrams in that five milliliters. So if you think about it, if you draw 10 milliliters of fluid, that 125 milligrams is going to double. You're going to have 250 milligrams of fluid in your syringe now. So I wanted you to just understand that those are identifying two totally different things. The five milliliters is the amount of fluid or the amount of space taking up in that syringe. And the 125 is the weight or the amount or dosage of medication that is actually in that volume of fluid. Hopefully that didn't confuse you. <laughs> All right, abbreviations, super important for you to memorize these. You must memorize these. Um, so please write these down, run this video back a couple of times so that you can catch all of these. I'm not going to read through all of them, but these are the most important ones that you are going to be asked in a medication calculation test and use in real life. Trust me, they will be the most important ones. And conversions. These are the most frequently used conversions. So again, just like with the abbreviations, you must memorize these basic conversions, okay? I also suggest for this portion that you get some flashcards out and write these conversions on flashcards and test yourself. Have a family member test you or another nursing student that's in your school test you. Um, it is going to be important for you to memorize and know that one teaspoon equals five milliliters every single day of the week, every single second of the day. That does not change.
<laughs> and that one ounce equals two tablespoons or one cup is equal to eight ounces or one pound is equal to 16 ounces or one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds that never changes and you're gonna need to know this basic information in order to perform any medication calculations because this information along with the abbreviations of the different units is so important and I want to be as helpful as possible in helping you guys memorize these. So in addition to you writing your own flashcards and doing your own quizzes, I did put both of these documents on my website at www.coderedrn.com. If you click on the mentor tab, scroll all the way to the bottom, you will see free downloadable files. You'll find this file there listed as the conversion table. Click on that, download that to your computer and print that out. So don't let this slide scare you, okay? <laughs> I wanted to give you a quick example, two examples of how you can convert between units um, from grams to milligrams to micrograms. And so this slide is going to help me do that. Um, again, I'm going to give you two different ways that you can do that. And you just pick the one that you're most comfortable with. OK, so I wanted you to understand that the grams as it relates to micro milligrams and micrograms is the biggest unit of measurement in that grouping. And micrograms is the smallest unit of measurement in that grouping. The question that we're asking here is how do you get from one unit, the grams, to the next, the milligrams? or from the grams to the micrograms? And the answer to that is that you are going to either multiply or divide by 1,000, and the multiplying and division depends on in which direction you're going. So if you're going from the biggest unit of measurement to the smallest unit of measurement, you're going to multiply. If you're going from the smallest unit of measurement, the micrograms, to the biggest unit of measurement in this grouping, the grams, you are going to divide. So, All right, let's put this theory into action. So we are going to move from grams to micrograms, and we're going to do that in steps. So we're going to start with grams, move to milligrams, and then finally end up at micrograms. How are we going to do that to move from the biggest unit of measurement to the smallest? We're going to multiply the amount of grams by 1,000. So you're going to start with one gram. If you multiply one times 1,000, that's going to give you the amount of milligrams that are in one gram, which is 1,000. So one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. But you wanna take that even further and go down to the smallest unit of measurement in this grouping, the micrograms. So how are you gonna do that? Take the 1,000 milligrams and multiply that by 1,000 again, and it's gonna give you, you the amount of micrograms that are in one gram. So you have one million micrograms in one gram. You have successfully converted from grams to micrograms by multiplying by 1,000. And if you want to go from the smallest unit of measurement to the biggest unit of measurement, you're going to take that same theory, but instead of multiplying by 1,000, you're going to divide by 1,000. Same theory as it relates to liters and milliliters. 98% of the time, your medications will come in milliliters. The question again is, how do you get from one unit to the next? The answer again is you multiply or divide by 1,000. In this grouping of measurements, the liter is the biggest unit of measurement and the milliliter is the smallest unit of measurement. And in order to get from liter to milliliters, you will multiply one by 1,000. So one liter times 1,000 gives you milliliters. So there is 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Then again, taking it back in the other direction from the smallest to the biggest, you're gonna divide. 1,000 milliliters divided by 1,000 gives you one liter. I promised I would give you two ways to convert between a grouping of units. So the first way was to multiply or divide by 1,000 to get you from grams to micrograms or micrograms back to grams. Now, using that same grouping of uh, 
unit measurement, I am going to give you the second way that you can convert between the group. And that is just by moving the decimal point to the left or the right three spaces. So you'll move the decimal point to the right if you are trying to go from grams to micrograms. And you will move the decimal point to the left if you are trying to go from the micrograms back to the grams. So here's how you do it. Take that one gram, and you wanna imagine that there's a decimal point behind it. In order to move from grams to milligrams, down again to micrograms, first, you're gonna take that decimal point and move it three spaces, one, two, three. And you're gonna fill in those spaces with zeros, successfully moving from one gram to 1,000 milligrams just by moving the decimal point to the right. You're gonna take that a step further and get down to micrograms, and you want to take the 1,000 milligrams, move the decimal point, the imaginary decimal point that's behind the 1,000 over three spaces, fill in those spaces with zeros, and that's gonna give you 1 million micrograms. So you have moved from grams to micrograms by just using the decimal point. And in the first example, you would have multiplied by a thousand. It gives you the same answer. If you wanna go back in the other direction from the first example I gave you, you would divide by a thousand. In this example, you are just taking that decimal point back three spaces and getting rid of the zeros. So here you have the one million micrograms that imaginary decimal point is at the end. You're gonna move that one, two, three spaces, get rid of those zeros, and that's gonna leave you with 1,000 milligrams. You wanna get from 1,000 milligrams to one gram. You're gonna have that imaginary decimal point, move it three spaces to the left, and that's gonna get you to just one gram. And there you have it, the two different ways that you can move between unit groupings by either one, multiplying or dividing a thousand, or two, moving the decimal point three spaces to the left or the right. Hope that's helpful to you guys. Yay, so we have finished our first series in the medication calculation series here at Code Red Nurse Mentor YouTube channel. The first series we covered conversions and a lot of other content related to conversions. Next up, we're going to talk about oral medication administration and calculations. And then lastly, we're gonna discuss IV drip rates and calculations and introduce you to a bunch of formulas. Those videos will be a little more interactive, meaning I will be working out problems right here on YouTube with you. This one is more informational and it gives you a foundation to build upon for the next videos in this series. So again, thank you so much for watching. If I said anything that was helpful to you or that you liked, please do me a favor and hit that like button. Also, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you guys. You can get alerts if you turn on your notifications <laughs> every time we drop a video because we have more content and there is so much more that we can give you that will be helpful for you. And also, if you do not have a personal support group as it relates to nursing school, do me a favor and go over to Facebook and join the Code Red Nurse Mentor and Support Group. We are here to help you at Code Red. That is all that we are here to do. So the only way that we can do that is if you tell us what your needs are. Cool. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, you guys. And we'll see you at the next video.